I know. I know. So yesterday, Rachel was using the mop and- I never use a mop, never. We use a Swifter thing and we use- The wet jet. The wet jet, I never use a mop. And the reason why is because my spin mop, the little plug for the water container always pops out and it makes me so mad. And also I never feel like the mop is clean, no matter how much we clean it, like the little, you know, the, the, the fabric of it, I don't think is ever really truly clean. So I never use it, but we had so much residue all over the house that I thought, you know what, I'm gonna use the mop just for that. Well, as I'm finishing up the little, thing the plug comes out of the mop bucket and then spilled all over the floor like four gallons so of course i was upset i just moved the the couch and i thought i got all the water but what it did was it went underneath this corner right there right there and so now i've got a it, the molding was popping up so i just pulled it and you can see the water got underneath and ruined two boards what i'm gonna have to do is not today because i'm too busy yeah we're gonna have to move all the furniture and the floor is gonna have to get lifted all the way to there fortunately i do have about 10 extra boxes of this wood thank the lord for that but it's so upsetting oh. hmm i don't know if i'm enjoying the road back Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So tell me what's happening right here because I breakfast. see you have more breakfast than me though. I'm a man. Is this what's happening? Well, back to life, back to reality. We're going back. I should get more food. And one thing that I learned from beef, butter, bacon, and eggs is I should not closet eat food because I get more food than you. So I'm just gonna eat more food in front of you. No, you know what? I'm, I'm not gonna really do that, but. Well, I'm actually okay with it because what I learned during beef, butter, bacon, and eggs is if eating more food means that I need to be a six foot tall man that weighs 50 more pounds than what I weigh right now, I will be satisfied to stay in my lane and eat my amount of food. Actually, the, I got a hair in my mouth. The only reason yeah. I actually have an extra egg is because I had a little tiny one that was cracked when I was taking the other one out. Aww. And it, two of mine were much smaller. But it is true that we have different dietary requirements. Right. We really, we just do. My goal is to eat about 190 to 200 grams of protein a day. Yours is 145 to 150. That is different. That is going to, to cause different things to happen on the plate. And I want us to have a good marriage. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say, I love you, now go sit in the closet and eat. Right. Like that is a horrible thing. And I've done that for a really long time and I'm sorry about that. Um, that's okay, thank you. Welcome to day four of The Road Back. We're on our way back. Okay. And we there's hard eggs on this, so that I'm okay with that road. They're hard eggs, but they're not overcooked, so you're still getting some of the nutrition Thank out of it. Thank you for that. Um, so yeah, day four of The Road Back. Yesterday we had keto chow. Uh, it's only the next morning. Yes. But I've got no inflammation. We're and I'm good. down another pound I am, or about three quarters of a pound i am holding on at two pounds down but i continue to see decreases in in fat mass increases in muscle mass yeah which i'm loving let's talk about the scale because we say the scale is the devil and for the last three days we we're getting on the scale every day we have to though why 
we are getting on the scale every day right now, not as something that is going to affect us mentally and to hold stock in that number. It's a tool. But right now we're just utilizing it because we're introducing a new food and we want to see if the next morning or really two days later, are we up a significant amount of weight, which is probably not fat. It's probably water weight or inflammation. But that is one way to really judge how is a food affecting me. But I feel so much more in control because I see that that scale is a tool in the toolbox, not the captain of my ship. Right. And it's the same thing that if tomorrow I get on the scale and the scale is back to, you know, 195, I'm not going to freak out about it because, again, I could have been doing something which caused me to get down yeah. to 193. You know, so it's just really a tool. But somebody did ask in the comment section, um, how do you judge inflammation? Mm -hmm. There actually are inflammation markers on blood tests, but I'm sure nobody wants to go get a blood test. Every single day. Every single day. So for me, it's a feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, when all of a sudden your joints are hurting or you feel really puffy or your stomach is distended. That's something that happens with me with heavy whipping cream. If I, you know, if I have, you know, a half an ounce, an ounce, a little bit of heavy whipping cream, if I incorporate heavy whipping cream in a recipe like our taco pie, which we need to make that. Yeah. Um, if I incorporate the heavy whipping cream in a recipe, it doesn't really affect me. But if I just were to drink, say, four ounces of heavy whipping cream, sometimes I wake up the next morning with a distended stomach. Now it goes away pretty quickly but it's an uncomfortable feeling and that's, that's how i know inflammation for me it it's really is a feeling because the longer you're doing the proper human diet the more in touch you're going to get with your body and know this is where i feel optimal and this is where i feel kind of crappy same thing for me um in places where i formerly had arthritis pain and joint pain um, I feel it again. It's right. like it, it comes on. It also makes me feel bloated. You will be able to see it in my face, especially around my eyes. I do break out in rashes also, mm -hmm. depending on what it is that I am eating. So I will see it in my skin and it also affects my sleep. Yeah. And so somebody left a comment, actually two people left a comment this morning saying, you know, something that is so great about BBB and E is that my sleep has returned in a way that it never yeah. has before. And to me, that is a huge non-scale victory. One of my favorite things is sleep. Yeah, when I we love first to got rest. married, Rachel would sleep till noon every day. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, I, I'm a person that's, you know, it's late if you're getting up at 8 o'clock. And you would go to bed early and, and you're like, well, sleeping, like it's I could make that a me. career. It really is. I mean, when I feel <sighs> rested, then I feel like I could conquer the world. If I feel sleepy, I am grumpy and groggy and I am slow to get everything done. So I do not like feeling like I don't have any sleep. And we have put a tremendous amount of money into all kinds of like drink mixes and things to try to get the rest. That it turns we, out beef does it. It does it. Eating the right thing does it. So for me, that is very important to me. Yep. So uh, it is Friday. I have my last high school football game of the season Yay. tonight. Are you going to miss it? Uh, of course. I love officiating. Uh, but... Uh, we were supposed to cut grass today, and it is pouring. That didn't happen. So I'm really glad that we had made the decision to do the front room yesterday instead of today, because we wouldn't have been able to go buy sheetrock today. Yes, I can't get my cutting done, but I can move things around a little bit with that. But, you know, you don't want to buy sheetrock and have to worry about, like, all of that stuff. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm... Gonna go make a big dusty mess together today. Please don't. No, I'm just kidding. I, I actually have a bunch of videos to edit. I'm still in the process of of becoming an adult and getting everything back into You're 50, the computer. You're 50, it's time. Um, I spent a lot of time yesterday going through Amazon and pulling out receipts for the two businesses and I finally am caught up. I, I did 10 months of receipts. Of course, now I have to go into QuickBooks and actually 
you know, get them all organized and put what each receipt is for. Can but I say, it was though, progress. I mean, 10 months of receipts, like in this amount of time, like I'm very proud of you. Yeah. When you put your mind to it, like you could get it done. I'm hoping that QuickBooks Online is going to help me. No affiliation with QuickBooks Online. No. But I've used QuickBooks for, I don't know. Ever? Like 20 years, but I had the desktop version. Right. And I relied on me bringing home receipts and then scanning them or just entering them and then saving, I mean, folders of receipts for tax purposes. And, for years. And then I lose them. I can't tell you how many times I've bought stuff and then I lose the receipt, especially with the landscaping. I would go to the store, I would buy something and then, you know, we would blow out the door when we're working. And, you know, that's why I always have to go to, like, my vendors at the end of the year. Can I have a list of Can everything? I, 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 <laughs> so, at least with QuickBooks, it's snap a picture and you can throw the receipt out right. and I'm done with it. So, um, I do want to give a shout out to Steve from Serious Keto. Yes. Because he brought up something on Monday in his weekly podcast. And it really made me go, huh, I better right. do this. Because I am one of those people who has always been like, you know, you have a few passwords. Right. And, you know, I've slowly made them more and more and more complicated. And then I rely on Apple to actually store my passwords. But what if somebody hacks my Apple account, you know? Seriously. And, you know, he just got me thinking, like, you should have a different password for every single yeah. site. So. That's what I was doing last night is I went through and started changing everything because I have been the victim of identity fraud in the past. So, you know, I, I just, you know, like, thanks, Steve, for bringing it to my mind that you need to get yourself more secure because there's too many criminals out there today. He's not just a resource for amazing recipes. He's also a resource for amazing wisdom. Yeah. yeah what are you doing? Today. So I am checking out our second vlog that's coming out today because we're playing catch up right now. And um, I just wanted to make sure everything is good. Are you hungry? Because it's about four o'clock and I have to leave for my game in like an hour. So it's eat now or eat at 10 o'clock. I night. would really like to eat now. And when I'm previewing these videos and I'm seeing what we're eating, it, it really does make me hungry. But I think I'm actually hungry because it is about 4 30. so i have an idea all right i'm gonna make some ground beef on the blackstone over there because it is pouring outside it's terrible and even though our blackstone is under a roof it splashes in and i don't want to deal with that it's so nice that we can bring it inside we're gonna we cook on to. that so i was thinking we've got our bag of keto chow roulette over there yes we do i'm gonna make up some ones for the creamy because i have like 12 of the creamy containers. So I'm gonna make up eight of them and go stick them in the freezer. This way they're ready to go whenever we want, you know, to have an ice cream. Yeah. So I want you to reach in the bag and grab a flavor. Okay. I'm gonna maintain eye contact with the camera so that I'm not looking. Oh. Chocolate peanut butter. Chocolate peanut butter. Okay, so find another chocolate peanut butter because I'm gonna, the way I do it in the Vitamix, I make two at once because then I know exactly how much to use and I've already melted one stick of butter. Yeah, I think it really is a true on its own. Okay, so we'll have to do that one solo. And Grab another color, another okay. flavor, color. Banana. banana. Okay, do we have a second banana? Let me look. Yes. We have no bananas. Really? We have no No more bananas banana. Okay. Today. So, oh, we should make chocolate peanut butter banana. Oh my gosh, that'd be so good. You wanna do that? Yeah, and then you can some? split it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, reach in and grab another flavor. Don't look. Salted, salted caramel. caramel. Okay, grab another salted caramel. Do we have another one in there? I don't think I have salted caramel. This is caramel. not working out the way I wanted it to I work out. I have salted. I have salted caramel. I don't have salted caramel. Okay, so we're gonna make two of those. Okay. Grab another flavor. We need uh, two more. Two more flavors. Mocha. Mocha. Grab another mocha. Do we have another mocha? Let me see. Yes. We do. Okay. It's different lettering. 2.0 and 2.4. <laughs> Some How of our keto chows old. Grab one more flavor. Okay. Hopefully it's got two of the same flavor in there. 
Cookies and cream. Cookies and cream. Okay, do we have another one? Mm. Or are we gonna do a mixture? Let me see. I'm looking. Looks like you're doing a mashup, friends. Okay, grab another flavor. Let's see if this this will mash up. Otherwise, we make individuals. Snickerdoodle. Snickerdoodle and cookies cream are two separate ones. We'll just do two separate ones. Okay. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make eight keto chows. All right. Okay. Each one of them is gonna have four tablespoons of butter, and then we're gonna play roulette ice cream, because a lot of the keto chows become Everyone the same color. Is a winner, I think. And you, it's gonna be very difficult to tell what flavor is what if we don't label the creamy container. And I, I just won't label it. I'm and you reach in the free, freezer and grab one. Super excited about this because we don't normally mix up our keto. How chows. do we not have root beer in there or? There's no God is good. There's no peach in there. Where's the peach oh, one? I know seriously. we had peach one. Seriously. Okay, let me get started with lunch. Okay, got the black stone up. We're gonna go ahead and put in a package of ground beef. And we're gonna chop it up and then cover it with a bunch of salt. Okay, time to season up. Now, people ask us, how do we drink the daily minerals, the Dr. Berry daily minerals? Here's what we do. We take a little bit of them, and we pour it on our beef, and then you won't taste it. And then to that, we're going to add some mustard. And some Redmond organic seasoned salt. And then we're going to cook the rest of the way and mix it up. So here's how I make the keto chow for the creamy in the Vitamix. I take a creamy container and I fill it up to just a little bit below the line. That's gonna count for room for my butter as well as the keto chow itself. So I'm gonna put it in the Vitamix. Go ahead and turn that on. Then I'm gonna take my butter. This is one stick of butter, eight tablespoons. We're gonna put that in there. Then I take this one just to rinse the butter out of the cup measure. Put that in there. And then we're gonna add our keto chow. So we're gonna start off with salted caramel. And again, this is for two keto chows. Turn that up a little bit. and let it mix for a second. Okay, that's good. I'll take this over here and we're gonna fill up two creamies. Oop, got a little bit left. Guess I get to drink that. Okay, now what I do is, because you'll see a little bit of air bubbles in there, I let this sit on the counter for, I don't know, about 10 minutes. Just let some of those air bubbles come to the top, then we'll cover it up and stick it in the freezer. Mocha. Snickerdoodle. And cookies and cream. So you can see, it's gonna be hard to tell which one is which. You've got four, they're all chocolate. Which one is chocolate peanut butter? Which one is mocha? We don't know. The salted caramel, you can tell because there's two of them and they're a different color. Okay. But you're going to forget when, you know, you actually go to eat it. Well, and things lighten up or darken when they're frozen. And then you have a cookies and cream and a snickerdoodle on the other side there. I'm assuming that's these. Yeah. And which one's which? They're both the same color. So it's a little bit of roulette. But I'm a winner every time. <clears throat> Lunch time. You're going to call me crazy, but I'm going to put a little bit of lemon pepper on this. You're offending the cook. You're supposed to taste it before you put seasoning on it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so ground beef, mustard, Dr. Bailey berry, uh, mineral drops, and then organic uh, seasoning salt from Redmond. And then, of course, Rachel's adding the lemon pepper. So very simple lunch. That is good. And the thing is, you don't taste the mineral drops when you add them to your food. 
Did you get any of the keto chow inside of the containers or that's, everything's on your shelf? That's what I don't like about the packets. <laughs> like, I like the scoop, but the packets, as you rip it open, it does go a little poof and it gets all over me yeah and the counter you're and, super cute though and cleaning up powdered keto chow that has gone on to the counter is a pain in the neck especially if you try to use a wet rag don't ever use a wet rag to get the initial cleanup done no do the dry and then wipe it up buy it in big bags too it will save your shirts well you save a lot of money buying in the big bags i mean you go from 475 a serving to like 330 or something like that but it's about the cleanup though. and that's before our discount if you use the link down below you're going to get another 10 percent off of it so Figure out what flavors you want. That's what I think the individual meals are good for. Yeah. And from there, you know, buy the big bags of it when they have the big bags in stock. Some, some people do message me though. Like, I think that the big bags taste different. They don't. It's the same exact keto chow, but what it is is the individual packets, they're precisely weighed out. Right. Whereas you have a scoop in the big bag. So if you really want the identical flavor to what you're getting in the individual bag, you weigh actually it. have to weigh it out. I'm too lazy to weigh it out. Yeah. I'm, I'm going scoop. And that's why sometimes I get 23 meals out of a bag. Sometimes I get 20 meals out of a bag. You're supposed to use the scoop, weigh it, and pack it in there if you don't want to weigh it. But a lot of times I just take the scoop and it is what it is. And it's loose. Right. So you're getting a different amount. Yeah. So we're going to eat because I have to leave for my game in like 30 minutes. So I'm going to quickly eat and then we'll check in with you guys when I get home. Okay, I'm leaving for my game. Have fun in the premiere. Um, Hello. When you so get done. Be careful. It's wet out there. Uh, when you get done, go ahead and put the covers on the creamy and stick them all in the freezer. Just make sure they're standing up in the freezer. You can't like lay them down on the side. My mom got home from Disney World. Boaz went home to grandma's house and I cannot get Miss Tabitha out of her funk. She is really missing her little friend. I think we're gonna have a bath later and just try to cheer her up. You don't have to be bummed out. I mean, we're still here. I know we're not as cute and fluffy as Boaz, but I mean, we're something, right? <sighs> Water in a fancy glass. With two ice balls. Balls. I'm all about it. I don't need to have a fancy occasion. I don't need to have a fancy drink. I can chew my bones just like Tabitha in she's the background there. She's eating an there. ice cube. Oh, she's eating an ice cube. And um, I'm happy. How was your game? <laughs> my game was interesting. Um, I got cleated. Look. <gasps> no. Hey, non-scale victory. I could never do this before. Wow. Oh, and that's sorry. the anchor with all the pins in it. Come here. Oh, thank you. You kissing my feet. Kiss my foot. Um, yeah, I got cleated. The kid got blocked into me, and his cleat went right down the edge of my foot. So oh my it gosh. hurt for a long time. I'm um, sure it'll be nice and bruised tomorrow. So it was a lot of scoring. It was like 39 to 35 to end the game. Actually, no, I'm sorry. It was more than that. It ended up being like 47 to 35. Both coaches hated us. Both coaches said we were the worst crew ever because they were both very unsportsmanlike. So I think between the, you know, like the one side got like five unsportsmanlikes on the coaching staff. Way to have something that they could have in common. You brought them together. Right. With hatred. <laughs> well, we actually had um, the coach on the opposite side was our line judge actually got him upset. And I'm like, Hey, you accomplished something. You didn't just upset the coach on your sideline, but you upset the coach on the other sideline. But they were good calls. The, the problem was the players had really good sportsmanship. Just not but the coaches? But they were, like, they were just, there were lots of, like, um, pass interference calls and that kind of stuff. But we were expecting a lot more ruckus between the players because... This was an inner city rivalry. Like football here isn't like football in Texas. Right. Because we have so many schools. I want to say there's like 18 high schools just in our county. Right. So South Florida has a tremendous amount of football athlete. That's why so many NFL players come from South Florida. It's not like there's just A team versus B team. Right. No. So the, the talent is really spread out. Every team's got one or two good players and it's just spread out. But we have, like, for example, we have, I think we have 18 
like crews just in our county, just in Broward County. And every week they're working a game and sometimes we have to work two. So wow. that shows you how many games are going on every single Friday night in, in just in our county. And that's not even including Miami or Palm Beach. So this, it's the city's Coral Springs. Well, they have four high schools just in, in that in city. In that little city. And so you were playing Coral Springs versus Parkland, but the Parkland school, half the players actually live in Coral Springs because of the way the boundaries work. So they all know each other. They've grown up with each other. They've played Little League with each other. So they're not mean to each other. Oh, no. But from what I understand, there was like lots of social media bashing going back on all day long. Why so do we, we were need to do that? expecting to be a lot of nonsense between the players, but there wasn't. It was just the coaches were out of control. So high school season for me is over. Next week is playoffs, but I'm not doing playoffs because to do playoffs, you have to commit to every Friday night till the middle of December, and I'm not willing to do that because we want to go away. Well, and too much holiday time. Yeah, it's that, I mean, you have to commit to you will work a game the day after Thanksgiving. No. And I just, we always said we do Black Friday. So we'll I never something. wanted to be bothered with that. So at least the rain had stopped because it was pouring all day long and we were thought we were going to have to be officiating in the rain and that went away. We're having beef sausages So tonight. dinner is the Sam's Club sausages and I'm going to have some porking good. So this is, I guess I'm starting cheese a little early. This is the smoky jalapeno cheese because tomorrow we're going to eat some cheese. Tomorrow is cheese day. And see how cheese goes. Here, you can have these pork rinds. Well, now that we can have some extra stuff, I don't want the plain pork rinds. Why not? Because I want the pork and good ones. There's good in their title. But there's three and a half servings in here. Well, we both know that ain't true. Okay, so I get two servings and you get... That seems Where's more the fair. Scale? That seems more fair. Where's the scale? You can eyeball it. Thank you. I gotta eyeball it. <laughs> Joe is the scale. I'm gonna take this crunchy one. You're not the scale, you know why? Ooh. You're not Almost the scale. Almost threw out Why? Because the scale is a devil. And you're my angel! Thank you. So this is smoky jalapeno and cheese, 80 calories per serving, but there's three and a half servings in here. Five grams of fat, zero grams of carbs, eight grams of protein. So the ingredients in this one are pork rinds cooked in their own pork fat, white cheddar, cheddar cheese, um, milk, salt, Ooh. cheese, culture, and enzymes, whey, spice. buttermilk, natural flavors, salt, sodium diphosphate, sodium di dioxide. I'm going to tell you there's probably about a half a carb per serving because of the flavoring in here. Mm -hmm. So say the whole bag is probably two total carbs, maybe three total carbs. I'm good with that. Somebody actually messaged Ooh, us that like, it's got a kick. you know, they're putting the three and a half servings to lower the carbs. They actually, most companies are not trying to hide carbohydrates when they figure out like this has 1.45 servings. They're doing it for the calories. Yeah. Like, every company's goal is basically to show the calories to be under hundred calories, 100 calories when it comes left. to snacks because they can sell it as a hundred calorie snack. My thing is, is I don't care about calories. I, we don't count calories. Counting calories is stupid, especially protein calories. So I I like the way that you, they do it in Europe. A serving size is either the entire bag right. or 100 grams. Mm -hmm. So for example, this bag, the whole bag is only 49 grams. So make the whole bag a serving and let's be done with it or at minimum two servings. And be done with it. Just be done with it. I mean, three and a half. So I love pork and good. And there's a link down below. I think you get 10% off if you use the link. You seem confused about your feelings. But I just, I don't like serving games. So, so what did you do while I was gone? Well, um, I washed the dog. Mm -hmm. I went to Aldi because tomorrow is Friendsgiving right. for our kids ministry team. And I need to bring a keto-friendly dish. Oh, yeah. So Excuse that me. you can eat. Well, so that I can eat. And um, so I want us to make our our egg and meat bake. Right. But like our original recipe has broccoli. I don't want to be dealing with that. Right. And it also has cheese. And they actually ran out of grated cheese right. or shredded cheese at Aldi. And I was like, 
I wonder if I can still just bake it up, just eggs and meat together. It, we can try, but it's not going to really work. Let's just try it. The heavy cream. Uh, well, no, I might because we're going to put eggs in it. So, yeah, I can do that. We can make it with just no cheese because I know we're going to have cheese tomorrow. So you could have that. I could, but I don't you want, want it. You want a good a flavorful background. cheese. background. No, exactly. So, yeah, because that, that's our thing is like, well, that, for me... We're going to eat cheese when it's part of a recipe. Cheese like that is part of a recipe, like on a pizza. What the cheese that I'm going to avoid or think about is just the mindless, as we have in that video, the mindless eating of cheese like string cheese or right. gobs of mozzarella or taking a gob of, you know, uh, cheddar cheese that was shredded and making it into a ball. Like I want my cheese to do something for me. So yeah. giving me a flavor... Or doing something in a recipe like the broccoli and cheese, I think that's a good way to go. Or eating cheese curds or a really flavorful cheese. I'm even going to avoid that when we eventually maybe go back to having like just lunch meat once in a while. Where I would put a whole bunch of lunch meat and one slice of or four slices of cheese. You wouldn't even but taste that. But do you it. even taste that cheese no. in the salad? Not really. Even when we would do subs, I can remember like when... Um, I usually have to go double cheese just to taste it. I was going to say, when someone would ask you, what cheese do you want? I can remember thinking, what does it matter? You don't taste it. So for me, I, I'm, I'm going to enjoy my cheese, but I want to put it where I'm going to really get something out of it. Like yeah. jalapeno poppers. You know, put cheese on top of that. Or putting cheese on... If we go to Texas Roadhouse, having the cheese on top of the broccoli where you really are going to enjoy it. Hello, Missy. You smell good. Did you Isn't get she, a bath? She did. She just needs some extra love and she's missing Boaz pretty badly. So keto chow. Let's talk about that real quick. Go on down. Um, 24 hours in. Feel good. No inflammation. Uh, people have been asking us, how do you know like, if you have inflammation? It's a feeling, as we said earlier. You feel it all over your body. It just, it, you have to learn your body and the longer you're doing the proper human diet, the more you get in tune with how you feel. It's in my hands So it a could be like bloating in your stomach. It could be like arthritis comes back, swelling in your fingers. That's, those are all signs of inflammation, just not feeling good. And so yeah, 24 hours in, feeling good after having keto chow. I mean, I knew we would. We've been doing keto chow for a couple of years and we did it for over 30 days. But it's always good. But it's nice to test. Now, test that sensitivity. Was, that was with butter, though, not with heavy whipping cream. Yeah, we did that by design because that would be two things that right. we'd be having at the same time. And I'm really a little bit concerned about my sensitivity to heavy whipped cream. Yeah. Because we were having some sensitivity before this all started. Which we know. And and so when, once in a while, we will do heavy whipping cream. But we know what's going to come from it. Like, if we make ice cream in the Vitamix... And though we have the creamy, and I think the creamy makes the best ice cream now, I'm actually, I, don't, we, I may even sell our ice cream maker at this point. I don't know. But even though we have the creamy, there's going to be times where I'm going to want to make ice cream in the Vitamix. Because it's fast. Because it's 30 seconds and I'm done. But right. when we do that, that generally involves heavy whipping cream and we know what's coming with it. We know we may have a little bit of a distended stomach. Bloating. It, it bloats but then it goes away a couple hours later in the morning and we usually only do a half each when we do that i just realized tomorrow we're going to be toying with cheese mm -hmm. and if there is any problems it's on church day <laughs> so it's like i'll have the whole day well we're gonna eat cheese after you get home like when i get home from my games i have right. three games at 12 30 okay. so i will be home 12.30 to so one and a half to five, five o'clock, I'll be home. And so dinner will involve the cheese. Ooh. Well, then you really have church day because that's Sunday. Yeah. And then I'm excited that keto chow is good because we can get back to keto chow on Sunday morning with church because it's a longer day. So we usually have a keto chow sometime like mid morning. Yeah. So excited about that after that. I don't know what the next thing we're going to test is. We have to, we have to figure that have one to out. think about some things. We have to figure out some things in. that we can... I, I want to say... Well, I guess if you test the cheese, that'll answer cheese. And then from there, we can maybe do jalapeno poppers. Because you will have already tested the cheese. Right. Because the whole idea is once we test something and say, Okay, chicken wings don't cause inflammation. I don't mind one of the other days, the, the off day... 
including that. So for example, yesterday, even though we were testing keto chow, mm -hmm. we did eat chicken wings because we've already determined chicken wings did not bother us. Right. So if we would have gotten inflammation today, it would have most likely been from the keto chow and not from the chicken wings. So the same thing now, once we test cheese and we know that now if we get inflammation from the, you know, from Jeez. cheese, then you'd have to just maybe do jalapenos themselves and see. Now I know what jalapenos do. Bathroom pyrotechnics, burning style. Well, it's interesting. I, that's why when I, I'm making like the breakfast casserole for tomorrow morning, I was like, I do not want to add broccoli, mm -hmm. even though that was the original recipe because I've had a little bit of broccoli. We do know broccoli both us. with broccoli. And right. I just, it's, it's interesting now what you will give sanctuary to and what you won't. It's like, right. you know what? I just don't feel like feeling bad tomorrow. So I'm For just me, not eating that. Pretty much the only time I'm going to eat broccoli is if we go out to eat. I yeah. love broccoli, but it does, you know, I mess could, with me a little bit. And it's going to be a special occasion. Thing. I go out to have eat, it or not have it. You know, if we go to Texas Roadhouse, it comes with sides, I'll order broccoli. If right. we go to an event, I'll order broccoli. Like, I will absolutely eat Lynette's broccoli salad. Oh, like, yeah. We're going to make a video on that. That's good. But there's a difference for me between cooked broccoli and uncooked broccoli, too. Yes. So once I cook it, that's where I start getting that Watch gassy out. feeling. But if it's uncooked, just raw broccoli, that's I do very, very well with that. So I do, too. That's so let funny. Us know that. Do you have that, too, where, where like... For example, cabbage. I do really well with coleslaw, but give me cooked cabbage, like corned beef and cabbage. And then you and you're gonna want to move out of the leave. room for at least 24 yep. hours because Seriously. it's like gas city. Yeah. But it's weird that like uncooked cabbage does not affect me at all. I can eat a whole vat of my coleslaw and I do not get that at all. Yeah. I was in the Hungry Horde this evening and they were talking about cruises because people are looking forward to the cruise next year. Yep. And um, they were talking about like tips. For things that you should pack and one of them is like a, a room air freshener because you are so close to your bathroom that like it ain't even funny and so i thought to myself is as they're saying it i said you know what if there's broccoli on the buffet i'm not getting it so, i was thinking about that then and not to make this vlog any longer but i'm going to anyway speaking of cruises anthony was telling me royal caribbean has just announced a year long cruise. I think Who it's like has this time? 10 or 11 months. And honestly, it is not as expensive. It's How like, much? it's like $61,000 for an inner cabin, but that's the entire that's a year. year. That's the entire year. You could that not honestly is not that bad. Now to it, feed you too. Yeah. So a whole year, you couldn't afford cruise, a boat. but, but talk would... about like being in close proximity. But wow. I think it was like $61,000. And then if you wanted an ocean view, it was like 66000 or something like that. Why wouldn't you pay the 5000 And then if you want a balcony, it's like 78000 And I said, Anthony, listen, I don't have $78,000 for a cruise or actually a hundred and sixty, a hundred, what is a hundred and sixty thousand? Yeah, unless you're going by yourself. You got it. It's two people. But if I'm going to drop $67,000 on a cruise, I'm bumping it up to 78,000 to at least have a balcony because you're on that thing for a year. A year. I would like to see the outside sometimes and not be in a coffin yeah. inside <laughs> every single night. What an opportunity. You're going to get tired of your of your shipmates though. I just don't think I could do and that. And I think it has like twice as many crew members as passengers. I thought that was kind of interesting. Amazing. But yeah, a, a year long cruise. It no, it's like all you. the major ports. You can actually say like you want to stop like after three months or something, but you have to fly yourself home. Get out, like right, yeah. like deadly as catch or something. <laughs> I have a limit on any vacation. I would say 10 days is pretty much We've never done it. Well, I guess we did current drive into New York. Limit. 10 days and buddy, am I ready to be in my bed and to have just a sense of like my normal routine. I'm usually ready after about five days. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about a threshold. What's your threshold? <laughs> what is like, you better get me home and quick. Well, what are you going to do when we do like a month long RV trip around I the country? Well, I guess, know. well, it is your own bed though because it's yeah, your day. That's probably different because it's yours Yeah, and not a hotel. Okay. So, long vlog again. Sorry. Um, 
that's gonna be today's video. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we talk about stuff, you'll be alerted to it. Till tomorrow. Bye. Bye.